So, this talk is called Dreamcasting, and a great, wonderful thank you to Nine over there inside of Web Mile for the costume. Don't ask, it'll make sense in a minute. Um, so, this is a talk about marketing open source projects. Um, so, James Zawinski, DWZ, wonderful man, complete arsehole, hates Pearl with a passion. Um, serious respect for the guy though, and he said, when you're looking at, at developing software, ask yourself, when you're, try, when, when you're looking at software, how will this software get me laid? <laughs> now, I, I, I think that's an absolutely great incentive, but in my experience, Pearl people actually do tend to have heard of women and, and be able to talk to them by and large. So, um, given we do, however, need the beer money and the uh, flowers money when we spent all night hacking on CPAP, uh, perhaps more impression is how will this get me paid? <laughs> Or, to strike absolutely at the heart of the love of the Pearl community, how will this get me beer? <laughs> so, the, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, 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 the culture of Pearl is it's going to be beautiful, it's going to be wonderful, and most importantly, we'll be done and down the pub. Uh, but, okay, you, you don't want to market your project, you, you just want to write some code and have fun and go, yay, I wrote something really pretty, but let's face it, unused code is dead code. It bit rocks, it's irrelevant, it doesn't make any difference to the world. If you want to mess about and write something, do something absolutely beautiful that about four people in the world will ever appreciate, I'd recommend where I started out, which is pure mathematics. <laughs> um, however, if you're going to affect the real world, you come across the programming. So, let, let, let's just assume for the sake of argument that you're not John Rockway and hate having users, um, and that you're going to try and market your project. Um, so there's three important steps to marketing a project, which is promotion, evangelism, and continuity. So, first off, promotion. First thing about promotion is awareness. They can't fall in love with your project if they've never heard of it. So, as well as naming it sensibly so people actually find it on search.cpad, have a website. Have a bloody project website. It's not difficult. It's, it's a domain with some HTML and stuff on it. Pay attention to the front page. Make sure it's got the right keywords in it. Make sure people find it. This is their first taste of your project. And if it looks as wonderful as WaddleWord.com.org did before Leo got at it, well, they're going to use Ruby, aren't they? <laughs> um, once you've got them aware, you need to build enthusiasm. So to build enthusiasm, you need to show them code. You need to show them code as soon as possible, and you need to show what that code does for them. One line is a great, hello worlds are great but something that right out of the gate they can see that this project is going to do something that matters. Now they're aware, now, they, now you've promoted it to them, so they're looking at it. Next comes evangelism. Now evangelism, first off, inspiration. You want to inspire people with this project. You want to make them think, whoa, that's really cool, man. Has anybody got any more of those drugs? Um, <laughs> now now the, way, the way to do this, the ultimate crack for addicting a programmer is running examples. Not just running examples, but beautiful examples. The sort that give you a warm, fuzzy feeling when you first see them execute, and you, you have to try and fill with it to see if you can make it more pretty. Or say fault. Um, <laughs> so you, you, you've, made them look, you've made them look at the examples there and, well, that did something really cool. Okay, next, next part of evangelism, demystification. You need to show them how it works, teach them so they understand, so they have a conceptual model, <coughs> so they have some idea where to start when they're debugging it, and so they feel like they're in control. Because, you know, if they, if they wanted a black box that occasionally did what they wanted, they'd either be using a random number generator or visual basic, right? <laughs> Most importantly, you need to explain why that works. You need to get across to them why this construction when it, it might be obscure to them when they start it, is important because it doesn't matter if you've got the most beautiful, brilliant code in the world. If they don't get the reference, if they look at it and say, I put on my Roman wizard hat, what? <laughs> <laughs> Next thing, you've got them interested, you've got them caring about it. You need to demonstrate continuity. You need to demonstrate it's still going to be there next year. You need to demonstrate that there's going to be another release. Some projects are still working on demonstrating that there will ever be a release, but we'll leave that um, Which means you have to show that there's a commitment. You have to show that you care about this code and that you're going to keep working on it. So, 
Get releases out, announce the releases, put them on a website somewhere. Put up news, show that development is going on, talk about what you're doing, talk about what will hopefully be in the next version, talk about an interesting thing a user did with it. Better still, volunteer the user to talk about it for you and save yourself some work. Um, you always have this question of should you have a release schedule? Well, you can do time-based releases. I recommend not doing feature-based releases. Because then if one feature turns out to be harder than you thought it was going to be, you can end up blocking for six months and not letting the users play with all the other stuff, which is just silly. Um, but put up a to-do list. Put up a to-do list to show you have an idea. You have an idea of where you're going. You have an idea of what you're going to implement at some point or what you welcome somebody implementing. Um, and then you, you've, got, you've got this sense of moving forward without tying yourself into specific milestones. Um, if you can establish commitment, then what you need to do is encourage contribution. Because the best sort of user, the sort of user who's going to stick with you for the rest of the lifetime of the project is the user who's voluntarily taken a commitment. Or been volunteered for a commitment. I mean, <laughs> let, let's not mince words here. Yeah? Um, sing out the names of your contributors. Um, DBIX Class and Catalyst have both adopted a policy where we have an author line which is the person who wrote the first version. And then it, just because it works better with the CPAN meta stuff. And then a huge role of contributors. I don't care whether they wrote two lines of a test, one word fixed to the doc, or a hundred lines of code. They're in the contributors section. They contributed. This person worked something to the project because they tried it all. Um, and tell people how to help. Tell them where the bug tracker is. Tell them where the list is. Tell them where the to-do list is and how to get a branch to start trying to do something. Um, and now, I originally wrote this talk for the Italian Pearl Workshop. Um, and I was sort of, people were going, ah, but what about the language barrier? Um, uh, we, have, we have the reverse here. Um, I, get, I got shouted at quite a bit at the FCEU this year for talking too fast and um, losing um, a lot of the Europeans and all of the Americans. <laughs> but I mean, but there's, there's always a language barrier. I mean, there, there's a language barrier in terms of people whose first language isn't English reading your English. There's a language barrier if you happen to be um, unfortunate enough to be born in the South and don't speak proper English. <laughs> um, but there, there, there's an easy solution to this. More examples that run, because if people can download the examples, people can run the examples, guess what we all speak? It is a language. It is a way of communicating. I've managed to, I've managed to have design discussions with Japanese guys who don't speak English through a process of repeatedly pay-spinning back and forth versions of the code. And it worked. It was a more coherent conversation than, well, than most of the ones I have with English people. <laughs> the, the beer might have something to do with that, obviously. <laughs> so I, I, I have a dream. I have a dream of useful projects actually being found by people who aren't using search.cpap. I have a dream of projects actually being useful to people outside of the fucking echo, echo chamber. You have a dream. You have a dream that people will find this code useful. You have a dream that people will be able to do something awesome with it. So what you need to do is teach me that those are the same dreams, that what I want to achieve and what your code achieves are the same thing. And show me that I want to get involved and I want to care about this code because this code is going to be awesome for me, just like it's awesome for you. And that way, if you can do that, these people will spread the word for you. These people will spread the code for you. And the dream spreads, the idea spreads, and this code is alive and it does something meaningful. Beautiful code is a beautiful thing, and so is beautiful beer. <laughs> so without further ado, I shall stop and we can get one talk closer to being down the pub. Yeah.